Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. Wherever you are in the world, welcome to another edition of Jerry's Take on China, and I'm Jerry. We've been looking at Hong Kong a little recently, and this will be the last in a three-part series around the 25th anniversary of the handover. Today, I want to shed a little light on the national security laws, which seem to have got people very riled up. Most people in Hong Kong know the name Grenville Cross. He's a British barrister who became the Director of Public Prosecutions for Hong Kong in 1997 and stayed there for the next 11 years. He was educated in the UK, a long-time resident of Hong Kong with a very strong legal background. He's also a senator in an association called the International Association of Prosecutors. Now, you can call me wrong, you can call me a liar, and you can disparage me all you like for my comments on Hong Kong or China. But the fact of the matter is this, unless you're a barrister and have over 50 years of experience dealing with legal matters in Hong Kong and or other international arenas, you're going to be hard pressed to win an argument against Mr. Cross. You'd expect this man to know what's what in terms of the legalities of Hong Kong, and he does. I'm going to put a link in the description to an open letter that he wrote to Boris Johnson. In that letter, he described several things. One was that Beijing has kept its cool and left matters of internal security to the Hong Kong authorities. Another important fact he refers to was that under Hong Kong's basic law, the region was supposed to come up with its own national security laws. They didn't. And it's for this reason that China needed to. He also clearly points out that despite the promise of a high degree of autonomy, there was a specific exemption for matters of national defense. And although I'm going to put a link to Hong Kong's basic law in the description, I want to raise a couple of points here. Just highlight them because Western media seems to conveniently forget all about them. Article 12 states that the region will have high autonomy but it will come directly under the central people's government. This means clearly that though they can make their own laws, they're quite definitely part of China. And do you remember the furor Western media made a few months or a year or so ago when China opened an office of foreign affairs and everyone was calling it the National Security Office? Well, Article 13 of Basic Law says this is what it is, and it's being called the Office of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. There is no National Security Office. That name was a construct by Western media. The address is 52 Kennedy Road. If you want to go, you can take a look at it, either in person or online. It's never been called a National Security Office or anything of the sort outside of Western media. Article 14 is even more clear. The central government is responsible for the defense of Hong Kong and will post a military garrison there. A garrison which may be called out in the event of a public order or in the case of a disaster. Once again, here's an important point that Western media neglected to mention. The military can be called out in times of need. But were they? No, of course they weren't. Unlike when the British managed the region and called the military several times, resulting, as we discussed in an earlier edition, in many, many deaths. We even had a wave of anti-China sentiment recently when the new chief executive, John Lee, was elected unopposed a couple of months ago. But Article 15 states clearly that China has the right to appoint a chief executive. The next big one is Article 23, and this is the one many people in the West believe China has in some way overturned. From handover in 1997, Hong Kong has had a requirement to enact security laws to prevent treason, secession, sedition or subversion against not Hong Kong region, but the central people's government. That law should have prevented establishing ties with foreign political organizations or bodies, yet in 2019, we could clearly see that such laws had not been enacted and we saw images all over the news of foreign interference. We saw foreign influence riots. We saw massive civil disorder egged on by the likes of Nancy Pelosi, Tom Cotton, Josh Hawley and Ted Cruz. And it's now known they were partly paid for by America's National Endowment for Democracy and other NGOs. 
It's very hard to disagree that every country or region of the world must have its own national security laws. And it was always agreed that Hong Kong, even under the original joint declaration in 1984, would be protected in terms of defense by the People's Republic of China. So I'd be very grateful if anyone watching this can please direct me to a region or a country that doesn't have any laws to prevent treason, secession, sedition, or subversion. For the likes of me, I can't think of one. As always, if you have comments, questions, or anything to add, please do so in the comments section, and I'll do my very best to get back to you and answer all your questions. And once again, thanks very much for listening.